Hello and welcome to another maths lesson with myself, Mr. Looker. Today, in our Year 6 lesson, we're going to be looking at line graphs. We're going to find out the difference between discrete and continuous data. We're going to know that continuous data is best represented in a line graph. We're going to also find out how to read a line graph and how to construct one as well. We're going to look at different types of graph and we can see that the children in Dahl class completed a science experiment and what they did was they measured the temperature outside their classroom throughout the day and recorded it in a table as you can see here. They then represented the, the information, the data, in different types of graphs. So they created a pictogram where they literally showed pictures of stars to represent degrees. So if you look at the pictogram you can see at 6pm it was 4 degrees Celsius. They then created a bar graph. They then created a pie chart. And then finally a line graph. Which graph best represents the data? Pause the video and have a think. So yes, that's right, a line graph best represents the data for the following reasons. So if the information you collect is a measurement, it is always called continuous data. So for example, temperature, the speed of a car, the height of a plant, these are all continuous data. And they can have an unlimited num number of values within a range. Line graphs are best for plotting continuous data as they allow us to read the data at any point within the range. So if you look here at this graph, you can see at 6 a.m. it was one degree, and then when they measured again at 8 a.m. it was four degrees, and we can make a sensible guess that the temperature rose like this. So at 7 a.m., halfway between six and eight, you can read up and have an estimate that the temperature, even though they didn't measure it, would have been around two and a half degrees by using the graph because it is continuous data we are looking at. So for example here this graph allows us to estimate the temperature at 9 a.m. even though the temperature was not measured at 9 a.m. These three types of graph are best for representing something called discrete data and that has limited numbers of values such as the days of week or colors an example of discrete data would be the number of red cars parked on the street. So you can go out and you can count the cars on your street and that is discrete data. Okay, so in this example here, Saturday had the most red cars parked on the street and there was 19. The data falls into precise categories of individual days and individual cars. But for temperature, the data changes gradually as time passes. And you can think back to science experiments you did last year in year five, where you tried to keep uh, liquid hot using insulation. And we measured temperature every few minutes. And we saw the temperature slowly drop at different rates, depending on what insulation we had used. A line graph is useful to display an information that changes continuously over time, like temperature. And the points on a line graph are connected by a line. Hence the name line graph. Who knew? The line joining the points allows us to read the data in between the temperatures that we have actually measured. Our horizontal axis, which is the x-axis, usually shows the time. So today in this example it's hours, but it could be years, it could be minutes. And the vertical axis, the y-axis, y to the sky, shows the values. So here we have the value temperatures, but it could be speed as another axis, example. obviously. And as we discussed earlier, the x-axis on the bottom will have the times of the days marked. In this example, the y-axis will have the temperature. So we've drawn it there, and we're going to take this information here in this table and end up plotting it in this graph. Okay, now hopefully if it's on square paper, it makes it much easier. But then we pop, plot the points one by one. And you mark the point with a small cross. So it's not a big blob or a massive X, it's a small cross, as you can see, like so. And then you can use a ruler to join the points with straight lines. However, 
You will find when you go to secondary school, they will encourage you to draw the lines together freehand without a ruler, but you do have to be careful that the lines travel in a straight line. Find a point on the graph and follow along the grid lines horizontally and vertically to read the values on the axes. So you put your finger over the highest point on the graph below, and then you move your finger left along the horizontal grid to meet the y-axis. And the horizontal grid line meets the y-axis at 22. This means that the highest wind speed was 22 kilometers per hour. Now go back to the highest point and move your finger all the way down the vertical grid line to meet the x-axis. And the vertical grid line meets the x-axis at 3 p.m. So this tells us that at 3 p.m. the wind speed was 22 kilometers per hour. You can read up and across. And you can do this for different times. So for example, at 12 p.m. read up and then across. And you can see the wind speed was 4 kilometers per hour. So you're going to want to pause the video now and read this graph off the screen and then answer the questions. Be really careful because when I first did this I made a couple of mistakes. You have to read the graph really, really carefully. And here are the answers. So you can see the wind speed at 10 a.m. was 3 kilometers an hour. At 6 p.m. it was 2 kilometers an hour. The wind speed uh, was 10 kilometers an hour at 4 p.m. and it rose above 5 kilometers an hour at 1 p.m. It says the line graph shows Lucy's height uh, between the ages of two and nine. And you can see the time <coughs> in age, obviously in years along the bottom, and then her height in centimetres along the top. What was the difference in height between ages two and six? So if we look at the age two, we read up, we can see at two, she was 101 centimetres. At the age six, we read up, and then read across, and she was 111 centimetres. So the difference between those two is 10 centimetres. How much did Lucy grow between the ages of six and seven? So we know at six, she's 111. At the age of seven, she was 113. So she's grown two centimetres. And then it says between which ages did Lucy grow the fastest? So we're going to look at the graph and we're going to look for the steepest line between two points here. If we look closely, it looks to me that her fastest growth was here. These looks like the steepest lines. So at age 7 she was 113 and at age 8 she was 117. So she's grown 4 centimetres in those two years. Where the other years it looks like she's grown 2 centimetres and this one she's grown 104 to 103 centimetres so I think the age is between 7 and 8 whoops 8 hooray so that's a basic introduction to line graphs obviously drawing one at home is tricky because you may not have the square paper you need or pencils and rulers and so on but you can interpret them. So have a go at the Mind Maths homework, which is about reading line graphs, just like we've done there. Um, like I say, as always, if you're not sure, send us a message on Class Day Show. So that's myself, Mr K or Miss Ellis, or ask us when you're back in school on Thursday. <laughs>